Almost every malefactor starts yelling, I was framed, as soon as the law puts the arm on him. And sometimes they have been. Nobody will ever know how many inmates of state's prisons are there because of circumstantial evidence. Of such a one is our story concerned. Listen. Listen, then, as Charles McGraw stars in The Silver Frame. And now... The Silver Frame, starring Charles McGraw. A tale well calculated to keep you in. They check me out for the $10 bill and 22 suit that the taxpayers give you when you leave. I took a quick look back at the place where I'd left two and a half years of my life in a cell. Just because a Southern California district attorney had to have a pigeon in a hurry once. Had to bad enough to frame a guy and get a conviction his favorite way. Circumstantial evidence. I started walking. Just walking with no walls or iron bars or guys with thought of shotguns to stop me. And somebody yelled at me. It was a reporter. A little rat named Malvin Esther who'd crucify his own mother to get a headline. I kept on walking. Gee, gee, wait a minute. I got nothing to say to you. Go in the crummy rag you work for. The morons that read it. Uh, all right, can't you the bygones be bygones? I'm just a guy working for a living, beat it. All right, all right. So you got nothing to say to me? So, uh, so you say you're a friend. How'd you like to get even? With whom? The district attorney? All those white guys down there in L.A. How'd you like to frame them for a change? For that, I get a gram. <laughs> sure. That's what I'm telling you. Come on, let you buy me a drink. <laughs> First bell to booze in more than two years. Okay, what's the pitch, Melvin? Well, there's been quite a lot of cases like yours lately. Circumstantial evidence. The DA looking for a quick conviction and building himself up for the election, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. So my publisher's tangled with the DA a couple of times already, so he's going to lower the boom on him. That's where you come in. How? Like this. There's a dame, see? What dame? Well, that's all arranged. To pay her a little... Social visit, see? You cut yourself a little with a pussy knife or something, and there's blood, she screams, you beat it. But you leave your hat and your driver's license. I don't have one. So we'll give you one. The neighbors hear the scream. They see your car driving out the driveway. They call the cops. Now, the cops don't find the body, of course, but they find blood in your car. Yeah, go on. They pinch you, and you tell a straight story. The blood is an accident. Then you had a quarrel, and she started to yell, and you left. They don't believe you. They book you on suspicion of murder, and we play it up big. Cops picking on it. Come on, you know, that angle. You sweat it out, and you clam up. And what happens to the dame? Two days later, the dame comes back from Palm Springs, and we splash it all over the front page. Her story, your story, circumstantial evidence again. We bring up all the other cases. We just keep right after them. You know, wait, the DA don't even dare show his face on the street. He's dead. Finished. Well, how do you like it? I like it. Okay, kid. You're in. Well, what about the dome? Half now, half when we spring it. Okay. A thousand bucks and the DA thrown in. Okay. <laughs> Lester paid my way down to L.A., bought me a new outfit and a hat with my monogram and a sweatband, rented me a car and checked me into a hotel. While I was soaking in the tub, he went over to his boss office, the big shot publisher, L.B. Ross, brought back five bills and the dame's name and address. It turned out to be a beach house at Malibu. This was the first surprise. I sort of expected it to be some third-rate downtown hotel. But the big surprise came when the front door opened. Mr. Gates? Well, that's right. Are you Miss Fox? Yes. Won't you come in? Thanks. Oh, it's not a Mr. Gates. You look a little startled. <laughs> Maybe I am. Why? Well, I hadn't expected you to be so... So what? Attractive is a polite word for it, I guess. Why aren't you in this meeting attractive women, Mr. Gates? Not where I've been for the past few years. Oh, oh, of course, I've forgotten. Can I make you a drink? Oh, thanks. Why is it you always expect that anyone who's been in prison will be lantern-jawed and have a scar on his face or something? To tell you the truth, I'm a little startled myself. What a layout you have here. It is nice, isn't it? Yeah, right over the ocean. Uh-huh. Look here at this window. You know, from this window, when the tide is in, you can actually dive in the 30 feet of water. 
I've done it. That I'd like to see. Would you? By the way, what's your first name? Steve. What's yours? Silver. Silver? What? <laughs> oh, I got a silver fox, too. It's my real name, too. One of Dad's ideas. Oh, you as a character. Yeah, I'll bet. And I'm another, huh? What? Come on, come on. What's this all about? What's the angle? But, well, didn't they tell you? Oh, sure, sure. They told me. But they didn't tell me anything about a dame living in a $50,000 beach house with a half a grand of clothes on her back. Steve, you're hurting my arm. Talk. I'm doing this job for a lousy grand about what your kind would spend on a weekend in Las Vegas. No, no, come on. You're not in this for dough. You're in it for something else. And I'm going to find out what it is. Wait, you will. You were hurting me. Well, you didn't have to bite clear through my hand, did you? <laughs> well, anyway, now you won't have to lie about our having a quarrel, will you? Oh, it's bleeding. Here, I'll get something. Never mind that. Just talk. All right, Steve. I am doing it for the money, really. What about all this? Mm, the house is rented for only a month. And the clothes go back to Western costume. Oh. Steve, you... You hurt me. I, I'm sorry. You know what my father used to say when I was a little girl? The character? Uh-huh. He'd say, I'll kiss it and make it all well. Okay, write your own statement. 
I don't want to write anything. Well, what do you want? You just want it. Look, look. Take me out there to her place. I'll go through the whole thing for you, just the way it happened. Every word, every move. It, you can have a stenographer take it down, and then I'll sign. Well, I guess there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's a deal, then? It's a deal. <laughs> dark when we got out to the beach. I was taking a long, crazy, desperate chance, and I knew it. If it didn't work, well, the spot I was in, it wouldn't make much difference anyway. And then we were inside of the house, and they were all standing around, and I was in the center of the stage. All right, Steve. Do your stuff. Well, we had a few drinks, and, well, I hadn't been in the same room with a woman for two and a half years, and I... Well, anyway, she fought me off, and that's when she bit me. It... That happened here. We were standing right here. Then what happened? Well, she broke away and ran across the room and to, to about where you were standing, only back a little further. Here? Yeah, yeah about there. And what did you do? When she bit me, it, it hurt. I was startled. I backed up a couple of steps toward the window until I was standing about here. Then what did you do? Then I jumped. <laughs> fancy swimming that night. Even with my clothes on, I must have made 30 yards underwater before I had to come up for air. I could see them running around with flashlights on the beach, but out where I was, it was dark as a pocket. There were only five of them. They couldn't cover the whole beach. I made for a little rocky point about 100 yards north and pulled myself out of the water. I could see the flashlights all huddled together down by the house, and I started crawling up the embankment to the road. At the top, I stopped for a second or two listening and then poked my head over the edge. And right into the face of the little man I'd seen that morning in my hotel. I grabbed him hard. Please, don't. I found and I'll kill you. I won't. I want to help you. That, that's why I'm here. You got a car? Of course, right here. Uh, right by the side of the road. Then head for it. I'll be right behind you. One funny move and I'll break your neck and I mean it. Yeah. Oh, follow me. Here's the car. You see? Yeah. Well, get in. Hurry. Oh, boy. You two let me some wild okay today. Uptown, downtown, out to the beach. And then you step out the window into the ocean. Oh, boy, I sure earned my money today. From whom? Who pays you your money? Well, the person I work for. Who's that? Well, someone who's interested in your welfare. Oh, come on, come on. What's behind all this? Please, Mr. Gates. If you'll just be patient a little longer, I promise you that while I'm taking you, you'll get all the answers. After climbing up through the Malibu Mountains for a quarter of an hour, we turned in at a big iron gate and drove through about three acres of estate. I had a hunching place it was, and the house made the hunch look even better. Big and impressive and thickly topped bracket. Milton rang the bell, but when the door opened, my hunch flew higher than a kite. Because standing there was the girl I was supposed to have murdered, Silver Fox. Steve, he escaped out of the beach house. Don't let that man in here. Well, no, please, Jimmy Barley, we've got to let him in now. I kind of thought I'd find you here, Mr. Rawson. It is Mr. Rawson, the eminent publisher, isn't it? I don't know who you are. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-uh. I think you do. we better kill him now, Mr. Rawson. That's the best thing to do. That's why I brought him here. You put away that gun, Milton, and stop acting childish. All right, now. Just for openers. Who's Milton? Well, let's say he's my brother. All right, let's. Ah, oh, you're very foolish not to let me kill him now. He's a very dangerous man. Please, please, don't talk about things like that. Well, Steve, it looks as though we'll have to come to some sort of an arrangement. You want to tell me about him? Yes. You see, Charlie, that is Mr. Rawson. Well, he's been very good to me for the last year or so. And the house was rented and the clothes go back to Western Costume. You, uh, you don't expect a girl to tell a man everything the first time she needs him, do you? Okay, so he's been very good to you. Yes. In fact, he even showed my life. And made my brother Milton be beneficiary. For how much? $300,000. Gates, I swear to you, I mean nothing about this. The proposition that Lester put to you was absolutely genuine. Well, maybe it was to start with. But, Mr. Lawson, I think I could make a pretty accurate guess as to who suggested the little stunt for framing the DA. It was Silver, wasn't it? Yes, it was. I thought so. She's a very smart girl, this one. By the way, what happened to your reporter, Malvin Lester? Who can trust a man like Lester? Something had to happen to him. And the girl in the incinerator? It's just a girl, a friend of mine. A, a nobody, really. So you kids collect the insurance and I hold the bag. Is that the way you want it, Mr. Russell? No, no. I had no idea Silver would do a thing like this. How long do you think an old goat like you is going to hold a doll like this one once she gets her hands on heavy dolls? I think we can settle this, Mr. Russell. 
Of course, there's been a couple of murders. Before we can get the cops off her next, they're going to want somebody to pay for them. If it's money, no, I can... No, no, no can do. Not a murder rap. They want a victim. A patsy. I don't understand. Why not Nelson here? He actually did the killings. Why, I... All right! I warn you! Look, please. Thanks, baby. You really have got everything, haven't you? Even your own gun. Well, a girl needs protection sometimes. Well, there's our patsy. Get the money, Steve. Milton's got it on him. You got it that quick? The big newspaper men have ways of arranging these things. Three hundred thousand bucks. Cash. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Steve. Yeah? I've been thinking about something. So have I. You and me. Silver. What about your sugar daddy here? Oh, he couldn't say anything. He wouldn't dare. Oh, Silver, baby, how could you? We've got the dough. Yeah, yeah, it could work. No, I know it would, darling. Okay, but you'd better give me that gun of yours. All right, Steve. Thanks. Well, what are you doing? Getting some law to clean this up. Give me the DA. He'll talk to me. Tell him it's Steve Gates. Sorry? Well, I've solved your case for you. You'd better come out here. 1124 Balana Canyon. No, no, no. Two of them. Steve. A little stiff named Milton and a dame named Silver Fox. Steve! <laughs> drunk the night she went to the gas chamber, but I couldn't get drunk enough. I heard all the reports on the radio. And you know the funny thing? Right up to the last minute, she was still saying she'd been framed.